everybody welcome back to my channel my name is crystal and this is my social thread a warm welcome to all my new viewers and an invitation for you to kindly like and subscribe if you are liking my content to all my regular viewers a big thank you again for always coming back to watch my vlogs and to support my channel so i'm out of breath um <clears throat> this is part three of three the making of my kelly anorak and she is now finished um i'm glad to report so today i'm just going to walk you through the bits that i hadn't done in my last vlog which is the hood the sleeves and the hemming um and then do sort of like a summary review at the end um and just to say this is um, i have posted it on instagram already a reel with um some video footage of the actual coat I'm not going to call it an anorak, I'm going to call it a coat because for me it is a coat and I've also posted photographs on that, Just Fabrics, where I got the, um, what's it called, William Morris quilting fabric from, um, uh, saw the photographs and they've sent me a lovely £10 voucher from their fabric shop um, if I would um, consent to their photo, my photographs being put on their website, uh, which is great, or on their Instagram account, which is great, so thank you very much for that. Um, what else? So we've got a lot of love on Instagram. So thank you so much. And I think this is my proudest make to date. I say that with most things, but I think in terms of complexity and in terms of how much time and effort and money that went into this garment and the fact that it was a successful garment and I really, really love wearing it. I've worn it several times already since I made it um, and it just fits the bill and I'm so, so proud of it. So the last time, part two of two, I part two of three, the things that I was missing was the hood, the sleeves and the hem. And so I went ahead and did that. Um, and so with the hood, instructions are fairly straightforward. Uh, the hood was really easy to do. The hood comes in three pieces. You have the... Um, I don't know if you can say you've got the two side bits and then a center back bit and then you have the same again for the interlining and then you also have the facing on either side so that's the hood done it was relatively easy to do and then once the hood was created I then had to attach it to the um to the main of the coat to so the neckline of the coat and I know from watching Lauren's vlog from Guthrie and Garney she um her mind was made out of a um a, wa a waxed canvas, thin slate, and cotton lawn. So they were her three. They were her three fabrics that needed to get under her machine. Um, so basically, it's six fabrics. So she's got three for the hood, and then three for her mane. And she said she couldn't get it under her machine because it was too thick. And she has like a brother. I'm not sure what model it is, but it's the brother that's worth about fifteen hundred pounds. And she said it was too thick for her to get it under her machine. So she hand stitched the hood to the coat now i thought that i had to do that but actually my machine worked fine i have a faf quilt ambition 630 and it worked fine i mean it was um it was it was thick but it wasn't it wasn't not doable like it, it went through perfectly fine and i was so glad that it did because I'm, I'm not keen on hand stitching um finishing bits to coats let alone a, a major bit sorry my eyes a bit let alone a major construction point like a hood to a coat i just wouldn't have been completely happy with hand stitching that on so i'm happy anyway that i managed to get that through my machine so that was fine no problem at all um the only issue that i did have was um i'll show you so the coat is finished now here she is let me just show you so that's the cut that the the hood and I've trimmed that um, the facing with uh, red bias binding that goes with the bias binding of the seam between the hood and the main of the coat. I've got a lovely handmade leather label from. I'm not sure where that's from. This is this is a chain um, hook from Hemline. This is from Little Rosy Cheeks, I believe. And then this is the facing there. The sleeves are all on. And they're hemmed and I've also trimmed the um the hem with the bias binding and then the bottom as well I have um finished it off with bias binding so anyway as I was attaching this bit here this was all fine and creating the hood in itself it's all fine three pieces as I say join those together do the three um and then um join those together oh and then a faux fat a faux flat felled seam here um so the only issue that I did have was when I was attaching, 
when I was attaching the hood to the to the main you can see here it's quite a thick seam so as I say three pieces of fabric here three pieces of fabric here joining that together then I graded the seam down and then I put by I attached bias binding on this end and I was going to fold this top bit underneath and then sew it down but I just thought that would have been really thick and also it's quite narrow as well and I just thought my my needle would probably slip here and there and I just didn't want that finish so I ended up just putting the bias binding on the bottom um front seam and then just folding it up and and sewing it down so from the back you will see there is a line of stitching all the way at the back which you're not supposed to have according to the pattern because you're supposed to hand stitch this binding on yourself again hand stitching is not my favorite thing I don't like to do that also with this hood thing um, you don't obviously it doesn't um, say to you to put bias binding here it just tells you to um, fold it in by a quarter fold it in again by another quarter and then stitch that down for your um, what this is called face edging but I thought that kind of matched, went nicely with that. And the only issue that I did have was, I don't know if you remember that I said with this um, flap here, this front flap here, I, instead of sewing this down five eighths of an inch, I sewed it down at three eighths of an inch so that I had enough of the of this um, placket to put my buttons in the right place. Because I know from Rachel's vlog and other people have said that uh, this placket so the buttons here if I hadn't extended it the button would be right at the edge I mean even now if that makes if I didn't have this bit here which is the extra bit that I added here this button would literally be right on the edge and I just don't think that would have been an ideal scenario so I did add two eighths of an inch on this side but then what I didn't <clears throat> what I failed to realize is obviously this part here, so this is the facing and the hood, um, it doesn't account for the extra two eighths of an inch. So in this bit here, I just kind of, I don't know if you can see, I just had to ease that little bit in there to, to make that fit. You can see that's kind of stretched out a little bit that way so I could ease the end of this bit into there. So what I will say, if I was to make this again next time for anybody else that is thinking of doing that, just to make sure they add the next, it's literally only two eighths of an inch to the end of the facing of the left hand side of the coat just to get that to sit all nicely the other thing as well was um oh when i was attaching the hood to this part i originally had the zip facing this way so it had sewn it down and so it had sewn it down that way and so the zip was kind of facing this way which was really really annoying i did try to unpick this and remove the top of that zipper tape to make it to make it flat lie that way but i couldn't do it so instead i just ended up cutting this bit here lying this flat to this way as it should be and then just top stitching it down there so then the zipper lies that way that was the only thing as well oh and also as you can see i've got a couple of i mean i don't know if they're full puckers i mean that's definitely a pucker there this maybe it's just the thickness of the fabric um you know ironing it out i don't know it doesn't really matter you can't see it with wear um and then yeah so that like i said this bit here was quite tricky to do because it was just quite bulky and it's not the nicest finish i don't think but it's the best that i can do with with the situation i suppose um and so that was that with the hood um and then the sleeves as you know from my last vlog they were already made it's just that i had to hem them which i said i did um i just hemmed um instead of doing like finishing it with an overlocker and then hemming it I just used bias binding at the end and also I only hemmed it by half an inch as opposed to an inch which they recommend um, and I think that's quite nice uh, with a hem at the bottom so um, at the bottom you have well I had anyway from this hem I had um, what is it I had like an inch here and then it dropped down to another to a to another inch I think something like that anyway so there's like a step here and then you had to fold up a, a hem of an inch and a half so what I did instead was instead of folding up a whole inch and a half which technically I could have just done um which would have been fine I would have had a thicker hem on this side I instead trimmed it all the way down so it was just half an inch left and then I hemmed half an inch use and then added the bias binding to neaten that edge mm. and then the other thing was when I attached my sleeve initially so the easing of the sleeve you're supposed to put gathering stitches in the um 
sleeve head to ease the sleeve into the arm side, which you would normally do with most garments. I didn't actually have to do gathering stitches because my fabric was quite thick um, and quite cushiony. I was able to just kind of uh, ease it in myself without gathering stitches, which is great. And I think that was just to do with the fabric. But what I did find... <clears throat> is that when I attach the sleeve and um, part of this face um, part of this back yoke um, wasn't caught in and likewise at the front for the other sleeve it wasn't caught in um, and I think um, just a little tip I don't think it tells you to do it in the pattern because I would have done it otherwise is make sure you base this bit here your front yoke and your back yoke make sure you're based at the arm side so when you go to attaching your sleeve it's all caught in because I had to unpick mine and redo it twice uh, so that's a bit annoying but apart from that everything is done oh and also the tools so once I'd done everything the tools obviously attaching all of these spring snaps um and I do wear it and when I do use the snaps I do try to be really really careful because I'm afraid it's gonna like all fall off um, but they haven't yet fallen off which is great so again like I said with the tools that come with the closet core kit um I think they should really specify which tool goes for what because originally when I did the buttons for the um for the pocket I had used the wrong tool so I had used this tool here which is the one with the hole I don't know if you can see the one with the hole and what I was doing was here is the top of the spring snap and here is the other half of it and um I was using this to go in because it fits perfectly I don't know if you can see it fits if it's perfectly in there and then you hammer that down and that is supposed to I don't have the other half of it that is supposed to then make that metal thing enclose into a little uh, post underneath so that's what I was doing and then actually when I was using the pocket it it fallen off so I had to do it again and then I realized now doing the the rest of the snaps at the end of the project was these two things here aren't for, these are for punching holes, I believe, in your fabric, because it's the perfect hole. So you use that, you put that straight into your fabric, and um, you put this underneath your fabric, and then you hammer it down, and that creates the perfect hole to get your um, little posts in. And um, this one is for a bigger hole. I'm not sure which one that would have gone for. Oh, maybe that was, oh, I think that was for the grommet then. Um, is it the same size as the grommet? Yeah, it's the same size as the grommet. So this would have been to cut out the grommet hole. Um, so there, now I know what those two things are. So these are kind of manual hole punches. <clears throat> and then this is what I should have used um, for punching this because that fits perfectly in there as well. Um, and it has, um, that fits perfectly in there. And it has like a little um, thing at the end that uh, punches the metal into the thingy. So that's that. And then when it came to um, the other half of the spring snap, this bit here. So that, I don't know what these things are called. That bit goes onto that bit, if that makes sense. And then I didn't know whether I had to use this one here because that fits sort of perfectly on there and then hammer that down. But then also the other one, well, actually the other one doesn't fit. So, so it must've been that one. So anyway, it was, it was get kind of confusing what to do in the end, um, but I figured it out. And then this little bit here, I don't even know what this bit is. I've never even, I didn't even know what I would use this for. I mean, does that go in there? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what this bit is for. So that comes with a kit as well. I don't know what that's used for. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that about the kits. But everything went um, together nicely. Um, and then I ended up taking this off because it was too... Um, it was too big for the knot of this knot was too big for it anyway and i only had one as i say on my kit and um, when i opened it up i only had one which is a shame <clears throat> and everything else is great um what else did i want to say let me try it on um so let me just show you so that's the hood lining there's the facing with the light with the trim that's my handmade sign there so this is the inside so that's just overlocked um that's that side there, the zipper on that side, overlocking again. This is my um, 
um, waste channel and that's the bias binding at the bottom these are the pockets oops a bit of fabric showing there um and then that's the back as well and let me try it on and it's actually quite nice because I've tried it on with a thick jumper and it fits as well. So I'm not sure how this toile issue actually, you know, because when I did the toile and I put a thick jumper on, it wasn't working. Anyway, I guess the toile is useful, but don't use that as your kind of be all on be all or end all you know if the toile doesn't fit then the coat won't fit kind of thing although I suppose that's the whole point of it but what I'm trying to say is the toile fitted me with a just this sort of a t-shirt fabric on and um, but it didn't so much fit me with a jumper on I have tried this on with the jumper and it fits perfectly fine and um, so there is a lot of room in there so that was just very lucky so this is how it fits move the chair out of the way and it's nice that when I wear it open or even in the hood, you can see all of that gorgeous fabric and that red pop of colour there, which I think is really, really nice. And I would just wear it open like this. You can obviously adjust um, this to cinch in the waist if you wanted to, which I kind of just do it loosely. Um, so that's what it looks like. And then it obviously buttons up really, really beautifully as well. Um, let me button it up. Not button it up, zip it up and then button it up. So there you go. Ow. All the way to the top. Oh. Oh. All the way to the top. And then the buttons do work. Let's hopefully it doesn't um, all pop off as I'm doing this video. Hands in pockets. And then the back. Can you see that? So very happy with that. Um, and oh, the hood, let me just show you with the hood on. So the hood is a good fit as well. Uh, my only qualm, I mean, it's not the fault of the pattern, is that obviously the wall against my neck is a bit itchy, but I mean, that's not really something that the pattern can help. Um, and this is my anorak. I'm really, really loving it. I think it looks really, really um, quite expensive, actually. And actually, it is expensive. I mean, by the time, you know, the m amount of time and money you've spent on it, it is actually um, an expensive item. So I would, um, I would estimate the cost that I've spent on this fabric wise and everything so um was about i would say about 150 pounds so that's the um the wool this is the x barber 100 percent herringbone wool which is gorgeous it's herringbone and then it has like a tart like a grid effect as well on the top which is amazing um and i think that was about i think it was about um 20 pounds a meter maybe so that was three meters i did have three and a half meters but i didn't end up using the extra half meter because i did extend the length of the coat because it wasn't necessary so three meters of that i think it was about 20 pounds a meter so that's 60 pounds and then the um the um what's it called this william morris cotton was only about 13 pounds a meter but i did need I think I used three meters of that because it's a narrow width. I think it's only 110 um, instead of a normal 140 or 150 length width. So I use three meters of this. So that's 39 pounds plus 45 is 85 pounds ish. And then the thin slate was about 14 pounds a meter. And I bought two plus postage and packaging. I think it was 35 pounds altogether. So that's 80, 90, 150. 115 already and then what else did i buy um i mean the acetate was quite cheap that was like i think it's like two pounds a meter for that um and then all the hardware i'm not actually sure how much the hardware was but i'm assuming it was about 20 pounds of the hardware if not more so that's 135 pounds bias binding was very cheap um i would say about 
two pounds maybe for that so that's a hundred and i've lost my count already 128 pounds oh the thread you need about three spools of thread i use the gutterman thread two pounds each from jenny stitches although elsewhere they are a bit more expensive but it doesn't actually tell you on the project how much thread you need which is a bit silly really because I, I would assume most people would think that you would need one one spool of thread maybe two because it's a coat but if you you actually need three and I think if they don't, they should tell you how much you need, like on average or generally, just because if you've got a particular coloured fabric and you're doing your project and you run out and you can't remember the, the colour match code of the thread or you just can't get any of that thread, um, then it's a bit of a shame to have to pause your project to get more supplies. So I use three and a half Gutterman's, no, three spools of Gutterman's thread um, and also some red <clears throat> thread for the for the binding and luckily what i was able to do for example when i was doing the hem i was able to do um put red thread in my bobbin and the brown thread in my top thing and i was able to sew that together so you could only see the brown on that side and the red on that side so that was quite handy um and then what else is i gonna say so that's thread Oh, and also I've discovered that one Gutterman spool can fill three bobbins. So when I first started, I just pre-prepared three bobbins just so that every time my bobbin ran out, I didn't have to un, um, unthread my machine and, and rewind and fill up some bobbins. So I did three bobbins. And the reason I did three bobbins was because that's how much one spool of thread um, used up. So three bobbins e equals one Gutterman spool, which is really interesting to know. So that's that. Let me post some photos just of the of the coat um, by itself. Um, and I did do a reel on Instagram to some music and it was really lovely. Although, funnily enough, when I tried to add a video in video pictures in my vlogs on iMovie, iMovie doesn't seem to be able to um, to convert the file i'm not sure maybe my ipad is full or my google drive is full or what have you so i can't actually put um videos in my little screen thing so i mean doesn't matter so yeah that's my kelly anorak i really really like it so much so that i am actually considering making another one my 16 year old says she really loves my one and she'd like another one and i was like oh it takes so long to do but then she said oh mom it will be mine but you can borrow it as well so you have two anoraks <laughs> so i'm trying to find some nice fabric i probably will go with sort of the wool again and the definitely the insulated quilted interlining um so i'm just looking around for some um nice um color combinations to put another kelly anorak together um so definitely think it's worth it time wise i would i think i've estimated about 40 hours altogether from start to finish that's everything from cutting out the pattern to cutting out the fabric to interlining to sewing even the quilting as well is included in that and the quilting altogether i think took me about four hours just for quilting my interlining so that's another although that's quite fun to do that's quite relaxing like you don't have to think too much that's something you could do sort of just here and there um, so that's quite nice to do in the end i ended up doing a size 12 with no adjustments even though my 12 was a 14 i decided to go with the 12 in the end um, and that's with me as a bust of 40 waist of 34 um I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for all my notes here oh and i used a stretch needle throughout which is a bit odd you'd think so the reason i used a stretch needle was because again lauren from guthrie and garney she said she used a denim needle throughout her whole process because of the fabric was really really thick in between you know so she wanted a nice strong needle but when it came to top stitching her needle um her machine was skipping stitches and she suggested that a stretch needle would be best because the eye is higher on the stretch needle because it allows for something or other it allows the loops to become bigger um to accommodate stretch in a fabric and that is very good for top stitching apparently so she then switched over to a stretch stitch so i just thought you know my fabric's not that thick i think it's going to fit uh, do fine with a stretch needle and i just use a stretch needle throughout the whole project and it worked fine i've not noticed any skip stitches either um what else? sorry the baby i can hear the baby crying in the background um uh la, 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 pocket lining okay yeah with my pocket lining i did line my pockets as i said and i attached them right sides together using a three-eighth inch 
of a seam allowance and I top stitched it with a 3 8 inch seam allowance so I'll know that for next time and um, definitely if I do make it again I'll make sure that I attach the sleeves one seam at a time so then I can at least flat felt seam one seam fully even if I can't do the second one I think that first one would be nice to have it as a flat felt seam elbow patches I forgot the elbow patches again I had to attach those whilst the two pieces of the sleeves weren't yet attached together and um, so that's one thing that I would like to do for my next one um cuff hem seam tag in front of them that already if everything that you will hold through so yeah that's it that's all i have down on my notes so all in all a really really good make instructions aren't they are good but they are i mean according to my from my experience there were a couple of issues i found uh, but that could just be me so i've written notes on my um on my um, instructions for next time it is a very i think because i've spent so much time just curating all the fabric for this like i wanted the wool i wanted the thin slate i wanted you know all these you know various bits and pieces to come together i really enjoyed the process and i really uh, love the resulting garment again 40 hours if you don't have that time you know you could do it over a longer period of time i think i did it over about a week and a half um, but it is a really, really lovely make at the end. And it's almost like an heirloom piece. Like, um, actually, when I went to my Friday sewing class um, um, in Walsingham, where I meet um, other mums and my children have their social meetup and things, one of the mums um, saw me walking through the car park and she was like, you didn't make that coat, did you? And I was like, I did, I did. And she was just so super, super impressed about this coat. And she was like, if you're ever going to sell them, please let me know because she'd like to put an order in. And then I thought to myself, gosh, it took me 40 hours plus like 150 pounds worth of um, materials. And, you know, realistically speaking, I'd be selling it for five and a half, 550 pounds. And I don't think people would pay that. Some people may. I don't know. They may well do. But I think... People think that um, maybe making your own is cheaper when it actually really isn't. I think the only time you could actually save money is obviously if you get fabric, you know, trawl around for um, inexpensive fabric or if you get like poly mixes or if you're making like um, occasion wear. Sorry, my eyes are doing funny things today. I think occasion wear, you will save money on occasion wear because occasion wear like weddings and things you know, you, you, you end up buying a dress for like 180, 200 pounds. Well, so you could probably um, make a dress for cheaper than that. But everything else, normal casual wear, normal dresses, normal coats, everything is much more expensive if you make it yourself. Um, so that's that. Um, and what else did I want to say? So all in all, very good make. I would highly recommend it. It's not for the faint hearted. It's something that you do need to do a lot of research about and just take it slowly one day at a time and you'll get a lovely, perfect coat at the end. Um, that's the baby crying, so I'm going to have to go. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoy um, looking through my videos and watching my um, the rest of the vlogs that come with this. I've got part one, two and three. After this, I then just have my roundup of the month to do and then there'll be plans for april so that's exciting um thank you so much again for watching and i will see you again next time um hopefully that vlog wasn't too long for you take care again god bless bye bye